Hi, I'm Adam, thanks for stopping by, and in this video I'll be taking a look at some of the menus on the Ultimate 64. Turning on the Ultimate 64 boots it to this screen. To jump into the Ultimate 64 settings, just give a quick press of the power button. You can see any attached USB disks here. Okay, so I've just highlighted mine. If you have connected to the Ethernet, you'll have an IP address here, so currently it's showing link down. Let's just connect mine to the Ethernet. So now we have an IP address, fantastic. What can we do with this? Well, as you've seen in a previous video of mine, you can use an FTP client on another computer to send software to an attached USB device on the Ultimate 64 motherboard. Okay, let's go ahead and look at some of the menus. So the first menu is F2. Within the F2 menu, I have some Ultimate 64 specific settings, clock settings, etc., etc. So let's jump in and have a look at the Ultimate 64 specific settings. Now the first thing on here is the HDMI scan lines. So as you can see, it's disabled on mine. Let's enable it. Okay, and back out of this menu by pressing run stop. So let's back on out and see what it looks like. So run stop takes us back there. So as you can see, we now have scan lines, maybe a bit more visible than in the Ultimate 64 menu. I can see. Scan lines, 20, go to 10, run. Okay, let's get out of this and jump back into the menu. What else is on here? So F2 menu, ultimate 64 settings. I'm actually going to turn these off. Okay, and back into the menu. Clock settings. Okay, why would we want the clock settings on a Commodore 64? It's not essential to run the Commodore 64 software. However, if you want correctly timestamped files saved on your USB stick, then you'll need to set the time and date here. Let's jump back into the previous menu again. I'm not interested in looking at the LED strip settings today or the data streams. What I do want to take a quick look at is the C64 and cartridge settings. So as you've seen when my machine first booted up, it booted up into a specific cartridge that had been attached. The specific cartridge that had been attached internally in software was the Retro Replay version 3.8Q PAL. So let's hit the return key and have a look at what is in here. So who grew up with the Action Replay cartridge? I did. So let's go back to this. Select return, come out of this menu, and let's just reboot the machine. Now I am going to power off the machine by pressing and holding the power button, and then a quick press of the power button to boot. And there we have it. The machine is booted with the attached cartridge, in this case, the action replay. Let's just jump back into the Ultimate 64 menu again. So that was a quick press of the power button. And let's just hop back into that first menu. So that is F2. Settings that you might also be interested in are the user interface settings. Okay, so as you can see on here, the interface type is freeze. So this freezes the running software and, and then jumps into this menu. Background color, the default is black, but you can change this. Let's try red, for example. Pop back out of this menu, and then you've got a red background. So let's pop back in, F2. And in this case, I'm going down to user interfaces and changing the background back to black. Okay, back in the menu. Let's change the border color to blue, for example. Okay, and then you have the foreground color, which is the text. So I've gone for mid gray, which is actually the default, but I did change the selected item color to red. So that's this red text you can see going up and down the screen. I found the default, which I think was white, is a little bit difficult to read. So let's go ahead and set this by jumping back out of the menu. The next thing down on the list is the tape settings. Tape settings allows you to select between PAL or NTSC, depending on the region you live in. So I'm going to leave mine set to PAL. Let's jump out of that and go back into the menu. And then you have the drive settings. So the Ultimate 64 can simulate up to two drives attached. So let's go into the first one, drive A. You can see that it is enabled. And the ROM for this is actually a custom image in my case. It's not the default. I've actually put in here the Jiffy DOS ROM. And the default ROM is already included with the Ultimate 64. So let's back up out of here. 
back into the menu. And let's look at the network settings. So if I go into network settings, you can see use DHCP is enabled. Um, the default IP address for this unit is 192.168.2.64, but I've actually created an entry in my DHCP uh, server to assign that address anyway. I like it ending in .64 because it's the ultimate 64. And let's scroll down to hostname. The default hostname is ultimate2. I think this must be a hang up from the firmware that the ultimate 64 is based on. I don't like this, so let's rename this to the ultimate 64 and back up out of this menu. The next function key to look at is the F3, and you can see this is help on the bottom right hand side of the screen, and it's on all pages. So that's the help menu. We won't bother reading that right now. And then the next one to look at is the F5 menu. F5 takes you into here where you can flush the printer or eject page, and there's various other settings. Um, two that are of interest to me are these, the start fix stream. So this is a video stream. You can start and stop it across your network to another device and start or stop an audio stream from the Ultimate 64 to another device. And at some point in the future, I plan on doing a video where I look at how to stream the video and audio from the Ultimate 64 to a PC. Let's jump out of this menu. However, after seeing all of those features of the Ultimate 64, the question on everybody's lips is, how do you actually load a game from this device? Well, you use another computer to copy some game files onto a USB stick, insert the USB stick into the Ultimate 64, and then you'll see it listed here on the screen. So mine is USB zero generic flash disk. To enter this, I simply press the return key and then select enter. Please note that the file structure you see here has been created by me for a little bit of housekeeping on the USB stick. I've got a folder for cartridge images, floppy drive images, firmware, SIDs, and TAPs. So TAPs are your tape images, SIDs are your audio files, uh, so it has a built-in SID player, firmware for the Ultimate 64 and the floppy drives, disk images for games, and cartridge images. So let's hop into the cartridge folder, enter, and then I can run any game on here by simply selecting the game, running cartridge, and it's as if a cartridge has been attached to a Commodore 64 whilst being powered off, and then the Commodore 64 has been turned on. So let's press F1 to start. And it's as simple as that. So here we have got Miss Pac-Man running from a simulated cartridge. Okay, let's pop back into the menu by a quick press of the power button. To navigate back up one level in the folder structure, press the shift button and hold, and then press the left slash right cursor key. Okay, let's have a look in the D64 folder. If you want to run a floppy disk, it's just as easy as uh, the cartridge. In this case, I'm going to load this game. Super Carling the Spider, I came across this a few days ago online. It's a relatively new game, okay, programmed, I think, 2015, something like this. To run the floppy drive image, you just press the return key, scroll down to run disk and press return. And then the Ultimate 64 types in the necessary code to load this game. One thing I'd like to point out though is as the Ultimate 64 is simulating this floppy drive, it's simulating it in real time. So the game will take as long to load as if it was loaded from a real floppy drive.
now that the game is loaded, let's give it a quick try. Okay, so with this, the trigger button on the joystick or the fire button on the joystick is jump. And the idea is you're this little spider that's, oops, I died, that's trying to collect up all these diamonds because this evil corporation has come in and they're using your underground lair for their vaults. And these vaults are somehow connected together with wormholes. But you can read the instructions of this game if you want to download it. Um, there's some things in here like, oh, don't let this diamondy thing that's moving about touch me. Uh, and these black squares that I'm on, as you can see, is making you jump really high. Oh. And there are other things in here you can collect, such as the heart, gives you an extra life. But you get the idea. Let's pop back into the Ultimate 64 menu and see what else is available. I'm going to navigate up one folder level by pressing and holding the Shift key and pressing the left right cursor now. And I'm not going to look at firmware as I've done a previous video where I show you how to firmware update the Ultimate 64. But let's take a quick look in the SID folder. I've placed some SID files in here and to play them it's just a case of pressing return on the appropriate one and playing the song that you want. So let's play the main tune. I would like to point out that I'm not using genuine SID chips in my Ultimate 64, I'm just using the built-in SID functionality. To exit that, it was just the run stop key. Let's go back up one folder level. And finally, let's have a look at the tap folder. As you can see, it's possible to load tap images on the Ultimate 64. I shall not be doing this today since it will take a very long time to load this image, but you get the idea of what's available. All that now remains is for me to say bye, and I hope you enjoyed watching the video and learning about the Ultimate 64. So let's do that now.